Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is bargaining with leaders. And so in this lecture, we're going to be asking the question, how do leader-based explanations for conflict interact with unitary actor explanations? You remember back to the third unit of this lecture series, we talked about unitary actor explanations for war, where we developed that really nice bargaining model to analyze conflict with. And what I'm curious about, and what you should be curious about, is how that model interacts when you include leaders into the equation, which is what we've been addressing in this unit on principal agent problems and leader-based explanations for conflict. So remember that the old model looks like this. We have two states, A and B. They're bargaining over an object worth 1, or 100% is what you can think of that 1 being. PA is the probability that A wins the war. 1 minus PA is the probability that B wins the war. So PA is what A expects to receive if A fights, and 1 minus PA is what B expects to receive if the states fight. And if they fight, fighting is costlier than bargaining. So states are paying positive costs, CA and CB, which are greater than zero, if they fight. And you'll remember that this is sufficient to draw this geometric diagram of the bargaining model of war. So A expects to receive PA, but has to pay a cost to fight, which is this minus CA value. And so A's expected war payoff is this amount. And likewise, this is B's expected war payoff, which is 1 minus PA plus CB. That's that value right there. And any negotiated settlement between PA minus CA and PA plus CB is mutually preferable to war. So absent any bargaining frictions, we should expect these two states to be able to settle somewhere in that bargaining range. Now let's add leaders to this equation. We're going to have leaders receive personal utility UA and UB for fighting. These values could either be positive or they could be negative. I'm not making any sort of assumptions about that straight ahead. We're going to see what happens when we fool around with that. So this means leaders might actually benefit from conflict or might be hurt by conflict. First, if CA plus CB is greater than UA plus UB, a bargaining range still exists. Why is that? Well, Look at the left side of the inequality. The left side of the inequality are the sum costs of war for the states, and the right side of the inequality are the sum benefits of the leaders if they fight a war. So what this is saying is the costs of fighting are greater than the personal benefits the leaders receive if they fight. And so if that's the case, then a bargaining range should still exist. So that makes sense. But we can see this visually here on what are going to be excessively complicated diagrams heading forward. I apologize for that, but that's what happens when you start adding extra variables to things, and we'll talk about that more at the end. So we have A's personal benefit being here. Notice that it's smaller than A's cost for war there. We have B's personal benefit, which is, again, helping out B here. And this is B's cost of war. So the personal benefit for B is smaller than B's personal cost or rather its personal benefit is smaller than its, the state's cost of war. And what we see here is that a bargaining range still exists. So the states should be able to negotiate somewhere in this interval, which is smaller than the interval from before, but nevertheless, a bargaining range still exists. So absent any bargaining frictions like shifting power and preventative war or first strike advantages and preemptive war or information problems, we should still expect these guys to settle. On the other hand, if the sum costs of war are less than the sum benefits of war, the no bargain range settlement exists. And we can see this here. So if A's personal benefit is now greater than its personal costs, or rather its personal benefit is greater than its state costs, that means A needs to receive at least this amount here, a very large amount in order to be willing to settle. And if we look at B's side, now, B is getting a personal benefit from war, which is greater than its costs of fighting. So that means B needs to receive this amount, and you'll notice that those do not have a bargaining range, right? The sum demands that they need to have in order to be willing to settle short of conflict are greater than a total of one, which is how much the states have to negotiate over. And so as a result, there is no bargaining range, and they can't settle peacefully. Notice here, though, that if UA plus UB is less than zero, the bargaining range actually becomes bigger. So you might have thought straight away when we got into this unit that only leaders, throwing leaders into this equation would only make conflict more likely. But as we saw in the last lecture on peace through instability, that's not necessarily the case. If a leader is really scared that he's going to be beheaded after he fights a war and he loses, that means that leader is going to individually view his costs of fighting to be very great. And he's not going to have a benefit for fighting. He's going to have a negative benefit for fighting. And if that's the case, then this can actually increase the bargaining range. So to see this, notice here that I have 
B's personal benefit still being greater than B's costs of war, but I have a negative personal benefit for the leader of A. And so now A is only needing this amount here, the small little amount, which is PA minus CA minus this UA, this negative personal benefit. And when you get to that, you have a very small demand that A needs to be fulfilled. And because of that, we have a very large bargaining range. So now these states are willing to settle on anything from here to here short of war, all because A's personal leader finds war to be very costly to himself because he's worried about being beheaded. And this actually has the strange effect of making peace easier to implement. So the takeaway points from this lecture. First, leaders are important to our study of conflict because they affect the size of the bargaining range. If they have personal benefits or person of personal negative benefits, then that's going to affect what kinds of settlements the states are willing to receive. So leaders are important. Don't take anything I'm about to say to mean that leaders are not important. They are. But, and this is a big but, Unitary actor, the unitary actor assumption isn't that big of a deal. You might have thought when we introduced that lecture or that unit that making this assumption that states are unitary actors is ridiculous and it's so far from reality that nothing we could possibly learn from those explanations are going to be useful for the real world. But as it turns out, it's really not necessary to strain yourself very much on that because every unitary actor explanation for war still exists with leaders included in the model as long as those some costs of war are greater than the personal benefits for the leader. So what does that mean? Well, think about this from a modeling standpoint. You should really use the simplest model you can to illustrate your point. If you need leaders for your explanation, then include them. If you don't need leaders, then don't include them. It's that simple. And when you're doing this, as long as a bargaining range still exists with leaders, then you can just exclude the leaders from your model and still get everything you want out of that model, but have a couple of less steps and you can avoid these ridiculous looking graphs like that right there. It's just fewer variables and that works off better. It works out better for everyone who's doing it, not only the modeler, but also the people who are trying to understand what the modeler is trying to do it. Try to trying to do rather. All right, that wraps up this lecture. We are going to have one more lecture on principal Asian problems, and that's going to take place in the next lecture when I talk about the possible principal Asian problems that occur outside of just conflict. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Take care.